Hello and welcome. In this video tutorial, we'll be looking at how to use object transformations and camera views to create visually dynamic movies in Pymol 3. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to add object specific tracks to the Pymol 3 timeline, move objects and save keyframes to enable customized transformations, save, delete and modify camera views, understand the difference between camera views and scenes, and create a movie with a combination of object transformations and camera views. Let's get started. I'm going to begin by loading in a prepared version of the 1FJS structure from the PyMol3 course data directory. This protein structure has had hydrogen atoms added and optimized, and the small molecule ligand and water molecules have been removed. I'm going to load in the 1FJS cognate ligand as a separate object. You can learn how to prepare these structures in Maestro with the Introduction to Structure Preparation and Visualization tutorial in our online documentation, or via the Teaching with Schrodinger Protein Ligand Docking lesson. We can carry out all sorts of scientific workflows using the Schrodinger suite, and then send or import the results into PyMol to show them off and tell visual stories. For simplicity, you could also fetch the 1FJS structure within PyMol and extract the small molecule ligand. The key for this tutorial is that we have our protein and our ligand as two separate objects. Let's do some quick styling. Show the surface for the protein structure, color this a single color, and then set the transparency to 20% so we can see some of the cartoon structure below the surface. Let's also show spheres for the ligand and color by element. Toggling the ligand on and off, we can nicely see the shape complementarity here and how well this molecule fits into the binding pocket. Let's begin creating an animation to tell a story by clicking on the timeline icon in the toggle toolbar below the contents panel to open the timeline. Below the composition tab, we can see the add track button. By default, a new composition will only have a camera track, which is where views and scenes are saved. We can see various subtracts if we expand the camera track, and we can also see these in the timeline inspector to the right, but let's minimize these for now. We're going to come back to saving views, states, and the difference between views and scenes later, but right now we're going to just add a new track. Unlike the camera track, any new tracks we add to the timeline are object specific tracks, so the drop down here reflects the objects currently listed in our contents panel. Let's go ahead and select our ligand, and we can see that a new track with the object name has been added below the camera track. Before we move on, let's save this session as we're going to be making some positional edits. If we expand the 1FJS Cognate Ligand track, we can see that we have a transform subtrack below. We're going to use this transform subtract to move our ligand object from one position to another. Since the ligand is currently in the binding pocket, let's start by saving a keyframe with it in this position. We can do this by clicking on the keyframe icon next to the object monitor for our ligand in the timeline inspector, or by right clicking in the transform subtrack anywhere along the timeline and choosing store. I'm also going to move this keyframe to the four second mark as we want the ligand to end up here, because next we're going to alter the position of this small molecule in relation to its target protein. In the Timeline Inspector, next to the 1FJS Cognate Ligand Object Monitor, click Show Gizmo. You can also toggle the gizmo on and off using the Transform Subtrack header. Using the white inner circle in the gizmo, drag the ligand out of the pocket. Let's save another keyframe here and inspect the transformation between these two points. Let's also go ahead and add some rotation using other parts of the gizmo. I'm going to delete the previous keyframe I saved and store a new one here. Use the playhead to scrub through the motion and let's go ahead and further edit this transformation either by storing another keyframe or deleting the old one so that the small molecule isn't carving through a big chunk of the protein surface. This is a good place to mention that transformations can be really amazing visual tools and they can be used to communicate scientific concepts, 
but they do not accurately represent complex physics-based molecular interactions or motions. For example, our current transformation demonstrates that a small molecule and its target are separate entities and that they can fit together in a complementary way, which is the simple story that we want to tell here. However, if we wanted to communicate the complex energetic process of this ligand moving from an unbound to a bound position, we would need to carry out an extremely long molecular dynamics calculation in order to accurately simulate this pathway and demonstrate that all atoms are in motion. We'll look at how to create movies with molecular dynamics trajectories in a later video, so stay tuned for this. But in the meantime, let's think about the simplified story that we want to tell here whilst being aware that ligand binding is a very complex process. Before we move on, let's look at how to recover the original position of our bound ligand if we forgot to save a keyframe, or if we accidentally deleted the keyframe with the original position. Of course, we could load in our previously saved session, or just reload the ligand object since we have that saved separately in this case, but we can also click on the action button next to our ligand object and choose reset matrix. Store that position and then edit the order of the keyframes and the length of the transformation on the timeline as desired. Looking good. Let's make this animation even more compelling with some camera views. We've saved scenes and added them to the timeline to show off different views and representations in previous video tutorials, but here we're going to keep things simple and just save some different views. Let's start by selecting the ligand and then zooming in to the active selection so we can just see the ligand in the workspace. I'm going to make sure the playhead is at the start of the timeline. And then in the timeline inspector next to camera motion, click on the keyframe icon to save this view. If we scrub through the timeline now, we can see that this view is actually maintained throughout. So let's store a couple more views that we want the camera motion to move through. I'm going to scrub to the end, zoom all visible, and then zoom to focus on the bound ligand and set another view here. And let's do another where we can see the whole protein, so a bit more of a zoomed out view. Nice. And now we can get really creative here. We can follow objects with the camera. We can have the camera carved through objects, anything you like. We can also edit the interpolation type here, which is the way that the camera motion transitions between keyframes. Just like with scenes, the default here is a linear interpolation, and we can do things like ease in or ease out so the camera motion speeds up or slows down. Or we can keep the view constant until the playhead hits the next keyframe. This animation is looking pretty nice, so we could leave things here and export the movie. Before I do this though, I'm going to quickly highlight some key differences between saving views and scenes. If I were to change the representation of the ligand by hiding the spheres so we can just see the licorice sticks, we can see that our entire animation is now updated to use the representation we currently see in the workspace. Now I'm going to open the scenes panel zoom out a lot, a view that we haven't currently saved, and save a scene. Let's now show the spheres again and maybe change the ligand colouring. OK, so now the animation is reflecting these workspace settings, but if I were to click on the saved scene and add it to the timeline, we can see that the representation changes to reflect what has been saved in the scene, and that the zoomed out view has also been incorporated into the animation, since the view is part of the saved scene. 
there are some pros and cons of using just scenes or just views or a combination of the two, so feel free to play around here. I'm going to save a few different scenes in the scenes panel to reflect some of the different representations and styling I've used and that I like, but I'm not going to add these scenes to the timeline itself. A reminder too that we will be looking at subtract settings in future videos and we'll be able to do things like alter the transparency between representations in our timeline, so more on this soon. Let's finish off this tutorial by exporting this movie. We've covered the basics of exporting movies in draw mode in previous tutorials, so I'm going to ray trace this one. It's always good practice to render in draw mode first to check everything is looking good before spending the time and processing power ray tracing a movie. And this is looking pretty good. Before we switch to ray instead of draw, let's ray trace a static image to get an idea of how this movie will look with ray rendering. I'm also going to test out some ray trace modes and use the lighting settings plugin to change a few other things here. Revisit the earlier generating images video tutorial for a recap of some ray trace settings and check out the Pymol wiki and command help for further guidance. Don't forget to play around until you're happy with how everything looks before rendering your movie. Last time I used 1920 width and 1080 height, which is a good standard resolution, so let's use that again. A reminder too that when using the FFmpeg encoder, you'll need to follow the install instructions if you're using a new version of Pymol for the first time. And MPEG4 is the long name for the MP4 file format. Here's the result of that export with ray trace rendering, looking amazing. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. You can now add object specific tracks to the Pymol 3 timeline, move objects and save keyframes to enable customized transformations, save, delete and modify camera views, understand the difference between camera views and scenes, and create a movie with a combination of object transformations and camera views. Thanks for watching.